What's up Average Dad fans? Thanks again for watching. So, I am back in the world of gaming after 12 years, yes 12 years, of no gaming whatsoever, unless you include Apple Arcade, I'm not going to count that. I am back to console gaming. My last console, as you can see up here, was a PS3 released in 2006, which is now 15 years ago. 15 years. A, makes me feel old, feel old, and B, what have I been doing with my life? So, why am I back? Because I believe the best console has been released that can introduce you to gaming if you're a beginner, but also for any gamer really, including hardcore gamers, and I stand by that, including hardcore gamers, the Xbox Series S is here. Let's get my impressions and a quick review now. So here it is, the washing machine lookalike that is the Xbox Series S in that brilliant white colour. I think that's actually the color brilliant white um, and that big black disc now something I should tell you is I will not be going uber geek on you with the specs because I'm just not that guy I am the average dad not the super geeky dad another thing is this won't be very long as far as gameplay because I've only had it a couple of days and um, what I will give you though first off is my initial impressions. Initial impressions are, wow. I got it less than 48 hours ago and I've played for about 12 hours. Yeah, and if I wasn't doing this right now, I'd still be playing. What am I playing? I'm playing Forza uh, Horizon. Forza Horizon 4, I think it's called. Too many Forzas. Um, I'm playing Jedi. Fallen Order. I've downloaded FIFA 20 and UFC 3. There is UFC 4, but UFC 3 comes with Game Pass Ultimate. Moving on to Game Pass Ultimate. Amazing. £1 a month for the first three months in the UK, US. Don't know if that applies to you. Um, I know you get a $1 for one month, but I don't think it's three months. So, £3 for three months of games, and then it rolls over to £10.99 a game. There are about 150 games in the Game Pass Ultimate. It includes Spotify, Disney Plus trial, loads of other things, but to be honest, I've not used any of that. I'm only there for the games, because it does get AAA titles every now and then, as so I've been reliably informed by all my gaming friends. Um, but the library of games that are already there also include the ones I've just mentioned, like Forza, which is just phenomenal. Um, and the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game is really, really good. Um, you really can't go wrong, it's not the most difficult game, but the cinematics and storyline through it are, are just incredible, as you'd expect from a Disney game. And then there's a whole bank of EA games that come with the Game Pass Ultimate, so EA Play is in there, so you've got your UFC, your FIFA, Madden, NHL, all the sports games, um, plus the Jedi is EA games, so that's all included there. Now the device itself is in that colour, control pad first, same as every other Xbox controller really. The, Rumble haptics, it's really just a rumble, not haptics, and this are better. Um, so I've been told, again, it's been 12 years since the game, but I know that if I'm turning a corner, if I crash into a wall in Forza, which I do all the time, it feels really good. Same way if you're holding accelerate and then you hold down brake, um, hold both down, you just feel this constant vibration, which is really cool. Um, control pad is really cool. 
Um, really good to use and easy, it's intuitive. Um, and there's a share button, which I will start taking advantage of soon because I've noticed that YouTube is just full of gaming channels with thousands and millions and trillions of views. So I'm gonna start showing my progress on probably an average dad gaming playlist, which will not be for the <laughs> for anybody that wants tips on how to game. But there'll be a bit of fun, you'll get to see me get blown up, crash, get beat at every game I play. So I'll start uploading those. So that's the controller. Don't think I'm missing anything out there. The device itself, all Series S's come with a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is fine. But when you start the computer, do the update and look at the free storage, you're actually around at about 360, 370 gig. Yeah, it takes like 150 gig for all the internal storage used by like, um, so a feature that you get is like quick resume. Basically all that's doing is all that storage and all that gigabyte is keeping all that information so that when you turn on your console, your game is ready to play within a minute. If you haven't turned off your console and it's just gone to sleep, the game's ready to play within 15 seconds. It's absolutely amazing. Coming from, again, to harp on about it, but even when I bought disc games previously, they would take hours to load. That's not an exaggeration for anybody watching this over the age of 18. The PS3, the Xbox One, take forever to load and this was using the disc so this is digital only there are no discs there's nowhere to pop a disc in here um, you're fully digital now what I do know more about is storage SSD because my Mac uses it because I am a youtuber I need external SSD so Obviously, first of all, I was thinking, this is really good. I can just put my Samsung one terabyte or two terabyte SSD, pop it in the USB-C connector and save all my games there. No, can't do that. Um, you have to buy the proprietary first party expandable storage uh, made by Seagate. So <laughs> one terabyte is 219 pounds 99 pence on Amazon so yes I've watched a hundred reviews that say so if you're just going to do that why don't you just get the X because then you can put discs in and this is my the voice that the gamers would use that are criticizing me and then it's like the same price well actually technically no because to have a disc drive that would mean I'd actually have to purchase the games in disc format which are like 60 pounds just now and only likely to go up, so I'll never be doing that. With Game Pass Ultimate, you do get a discount on digital games as well if you want to buy them and own them. Um, where was I? So, yeah, when I buy the terabyte, I'm paying £220, which I will be buying at some point, let's be honest. But then I'll have a terabyte and a half. So that's half a terabyte more than the Xbox Series X. So I actually argue that if I bought the Series X for £500, at some point, okay, maybe a couple of months later, but I'm still going to have to spend the £220 on the storage. So that difference in saving that you're saying you're getting if you buy the X isn't really reflecting or accurate for anybody that's going to potentially download and install a lot of games. Me, myself, I, I genuinely won't attend to start a game and flop between a couple, so like a racing game, football, and then like a, a role-playing game, like the Star Wars one. So I will complete that. And once I've completed it, I'm not sentimental. I'm not going to keep it there and be like, oh, remember when I completed that? I'll just uninstall it. So if anybody knows anything about storage, as soon as you've uninstalled it, the 80 gig that I think Star Wars takes up, maybe it's a bit less than that, is free again. So that's another game. Or two. Some games, AAA titles like Gears 5, I think it's like 150 gig. For those 80 and UFC games like that are like between 20 and 40 gig. So you can actually build up quite a good library of, of games before you even have to worry about uninstalling any or expanding the storage. So again, I'm not being put off by the storage issue that some other people are mentioning. One thing I will say is uh, I have a 4K TV 
which I've not hooked it up to actually. I'm not hooking up my um, console to the TV. I'm keeping it in my office, away from the kids. Um, so it's only HD anyway. Where I was going with that was if you've got a 4K TV, um, you won't be able to game in true 4K with the S, you will on the X. However, this does upscale itself. It's like 1440p and no TVs are really 1440p. Um, but it gets almost 4K. I would argue that from six feet plus away, you would struggle to see the, the difference uh, in quality. But if that's something that you will not sacrifice, you need 4K gaming, you have to get the X. So the Series X is the one for that. Other things I like about the Series S and the reason it appealed to me was the size. This is, I want to say, two thirds the size of the X and about one twentieth the size of the PS5, which is effectively just a fridge that you have to find somewhere to store. I'm joking, of course, the PS5 looks amazing. Um, it really does. Um, so, talking about games, I'm going back and forward here, but I'm excited to have it and it's my first console review. But games wise, most games nowadays, unlike back in the day, are cross platform. So you can play them on either console, like, or either platform like PlayStation or Xbox, which is another reason why I thought I'd just get the Xbox because the PlayStation is a, it's a big cost. And I personally believe the games available for the Xbox are better than in the PlayStation library, bar Spider-Man. That Spider-Man game looks absolutely epic and I'm slightly jealous of those that have it and I can't and will never have it because Spider-Man won't go cross-platform. Anyway, so what do I want to say now? Has the Xbox Series S brought me back to the world of gaming? Yes, with a bang. I am so excited to get through the easier or like role-playing game, Star Wars, Jedi, Fallen Order, long title, and then get really into um, like a Gears of War or the newest Halo. I'm so behind on things, I don't actually know what I'm looking forward to playing, but I am looking forward to playing a proper first person shooter, um, multiplayer. Um, there's so much I've, I've yet to do, I haven't only had the console a couple of days. So much I'm look looking forward to exploring. Um, and I guess that's it. If you've got any questions you want to ask about the console from somebody that's used it, I, then please do um, comment down below. Again, if it's something really, really technical, I'll probably Google it and give you the answer. Um, and that's it. That's the Xbox, like, I guess my reasoning for buying it, um, almost justifying it to myself, and what I think of it so far. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's brilliant. Um, very quick shout out to my now 70 plus subscribers. Huge, huge, huge thank you. My channel's grown by like 30-ish subscribers in the last week or two, and I am so um, happy and proud um, to have this small channel, staying small, but ever so slightly um, growing. So yeah, we're at 70 subscribers. I uh, appreciate every one of you. And when I get to 100 subscribers, I'll be doing something nice, I'm sure. And coming up very soon in the next few days, my next video will be on a subject I'm more familiar with, and that's the new Apple HomePod Mini. So I'll have that review coming up soon. Um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like. I've not had many down thumbs so far. However, I think the way I've rambled and not structured this video will probably get me one or two. And I know, I know, I've not structured that. I've never, I never scripted this one out. I've just kind of just blurted stuff out. Anyway, I'm still blurting. Take care. See ya.